Hello guys, and welcome back to another tutorial. Today I'm going to be covering a couple commands. Uh, this is mainly vanilla commands, but uh, we're going to be using it in the today's tutorial as well. So I thought I would get started with the commands first, kind of explaining how things work, and then I will basically cover the uh, tutorial over there. But uh, first things first, uh, let's take a look at the workspace. Now uh, we have a couple different things that we're using. We're using a execute command and with the execute command we'll basically learn the how the if statement uh, or the if and unless uh, basically works and also the run basically. Uh, the if is a true condition so if the specific thing that we're testing for is true, then you want the if statement. Unless basically is the opposite of that, it will test if it's not true. So um, for example, we can use this to test if the redstone is um, not powered, at, or basically if the, the redstone signal is zero, which is unpowered, and use the unless part to test if all of it is, if it's any version of any stage of a, the signal being true. So in that case, what we could do is something like, uh, now based on if this is powered the redstone, now these would decrease in power value all the way until it gets to the uh, 15th block away. So if we wanted to test for any redstone signal, uh, any one of those 15 different levels, what we could do is test for uh, execute if redstone dust and then un unless, and then it, it would basically we would test for the zero state, which is the basically the off state like it's currently in. And if it's not that, then it will test for everything else. So that would work. Uh, the run command basically allows us to basically run any command after if the condition is true. So how does this work? Well, I'm going to demonstrate it. Uh, this is the first script. Now all I'm doing is basically testing if the uh, current block is, I believe, located. Let's open up the text editor. I'll take a quick look at it. So the first one is testing if the um, it's a lever. Let's just see right here. Second lever. Okay, that's for the. This is for the second one. I'll cover that in just a second. So. This is basically testing if there's a lever there, if it's powered is false, and the floor facing, the face is on the floor, so it's on the floor of it, and facing east. Now, if that's true, then what we're doing is we're going to run the set block command, and this is going to run the set block command at that same location, and then what we're going to do is basically set the lever again, but this time we're going to keep the floor and facing the same and turn it to powered true and then we're just going to replace the block. Now this will allow us to replace vanilla uh, MBT variables um, very similar to how the thing works uh, in this example. So if we run this one as you can see we got a redstone signal from there all the way over here. So that's basically how that one works. Now the other one uh, is basically a little bit more advanced. Uh, now, in logically speaking, this lever is not connected to this lever uh, through any redstone signal or anything like that or any advanced uh, mechanics. So, if this lever wants to turn on, uh, we need to actually test if this lever is on first. So, what we're going to do is run this additional script. Now, I'm just going to pause right here and just quickly change the time to day and then we'll get back into it. So the basically what we're doing is we're going to execute if the block at the current location, so the same location, or pardon me, the second location. So if the block, um, the second lever, is facing the same direction and is powered, then what we're going to do is we're going to basically run the additional script here. So all we need to do basically is test for two conditions. So how do we do that? We can actually use the if at the end here and we can basically stack our conditions together. So that would work as well. Uh, we can also use unless like that 
and then stack our uh, procedure up to this point here and that would also work and what that would be doing is rather than testing if the lever is um, if not the lever then what we would do is we would basically set the lever uh, place place down the lever and basically set it on so that would work uh, now the only difference is we're testing for two conditions with this bottom one uh, the first condition we're testing if the lever the second lever of the one that isn't connected to the redstone is basically powered and if that's true then what we're going to do is we're going to test if the second one is not powered and basically the exact same script that we tested up here and then what we're going to do is we're going to run the command set block and we're going to power it so that's basically how this one works uh, again this is the basic format of how it is set up so execute and then we have our first command our, our first condition second condition and then our command that we're basically executing so let's quickly take a look how this works so if we pull this lever nothing should happen so again nothing's happening here uh, let's turn on this lever and then we'll try again and then we got a redstone pulse all the way through here so again this lever has to be on in order for that one to actually work let's try that again so we will pull the lever pull it a few more times nothing turn that on and now we got a redstone signal okay so that's the basic idea of how it works now that's great uh, now that's part of the how the system needs to work now again if we wanted to use unless we could replace the if statement with unless and that would test for certain things that would be not um, a specific thing so just to demonstrate that I don't actually have a script set up for this but I'll show you how this basically is easy to set up so we're gonna test for this little block right here the redstone dust we're just gonna basically select it with our cursor so we can basically have the coordinates when we actually type it in with the tab button and then what we're going to do is we're going to go execute and then we're going to go um, unless and then block and then we're going to just hit tab three times to get the coordinates and then we're going to go red stone wire that's the ID for the redstone dust and then what we're going to do is to test for the MBT we need to use the square brackets to test for certain things now what we want is we want to test if the I think there is powered is it um, I thought there was power. yep there's powered right there so if powered equals zero so this basically means if it's not powered so zero is basically no power going through it so again if unless basically changes it to if it's not true so if the redstone wire is not powered then what we want to do is we want to run a command what we're going to do is we're going to set uh let's see here We'll just do a simple tell command and at p and we'll say hello world okay so as you can see i typed in the command and it did not work so let's try powering it now um, then we'll just clear this again and then we'll run the command and as you can see it says hello world because this is a powered line right now if we turn it off, clear our basically our text menu and try again, we're not going to get any output because it's basically not powered. So that's basically how that works. Now we can actually use this in another way. We can actually use the data command if we have custom blocks in M Crater. And now the custom blocks need to be tile entities so basically anything that has that has support for inventories 
we can use the data command. Now there's a little fun little trick that I discovered not too long ago that allows us to basically use the MBT data from Forge, the MBT data for the variables that we set in game. Uh, I've tested it with true or false ones. It should work with numbers as well, I think. I don't know about strings. I don't haven't tried text yet, but um, I know that true or false statements do work. So we can create systems like this, where this block is currently unpowered, but if we turn it on with a redstone pulse, then it will turn powered. We can have multiple signals going in and disable a certain few and it will still remain powered. Now the reason why it kind of turned off for a second, I'm not sure if it'll do it again. All right, so sometimes it will turn off. Now that's because the tick rate is actually set to 10, the default 10. Most redstone blocks will actually have a tick rate of one tick. So the reason why you're seeing it change the texture suddenly is because it's um, 10 tick delay and that's probably most likely why, that's why there's a, a shorter delay between when we turn it on and turn it off. So basically that allows us to create a redstone power block using that. Now let's go into M Creator and I'll show you the basics of setting a block very similar to this up. But before I do that, I just want to show you the script that is required to basically run a redstone block like this. Now I have two separate uh, parts of each one. Uh, there is the block when it is unpowered. We're basically going to test for these conditions. Uh, this is basically just showing the two conditions here. So unless block and then the relative coordinates of the block that we're basically testing. This is from our um, modded block side and then we're testing if the power is um, not zero and then what we're doing is we're basically testing if the um, block is facing a certain direction. So if it's facing in towards east then what we want to do is run the data modify block and then what we want to do is run the relative coordinates of the block that we want to update. Then what we want to do is t type forge like this, forge capital F and then capital D data. And then we need to put a dot, a period right here. And then we're going to put our variable name um, that we basically named in M crater. Uh, this is the MBT name that we basically set and then set and then value and then the value between zero and one. Now zero would be, for if using a false statement, uh, like true or false statement, zero would be false, one would be true. So that's basically what this is doing, is it's testing for each individual side, and then it's going to set the block to one. Now we'll actually use these variables in a procedure in just a moment. The other thing is, when the block is powered, what we need to do is we need to test if all the other sides are basically unpowered. So we're going to set the sides uh, for the variables to false. Uh, and this will allow us to keep track of what sides are being powered and not. So again, what we're doing is we're executing. We're going to test if the block at the relative location on the side of it is the redstone wire. Powered is zero, so if it's not powered, and the side is east. Now, the reason why we have an if statement down here is we need to test if the side is the proper side. If we had it part of the unless, then what it would be doing is it would be basically running the command as if it's not that side. So we need to test for two different conditions, one being unless, one being um, basically true. So. That's basically why that's like that. This is why the turning off is a lot shorter in command length. So the other thing that we're doing is we're basically just testing, basically running the data modify and then we're setting the, um, the variable to false. And that would be where the zero comes in. And these are the basically the easy print versions for basically typing in the commands for M Crater. So I'll make sure to provide those in the actual um, 
description of the video as well. So let's hop into mCreator and I'll show you the script for the block. All right, so we'll start with the actual elements themselves because I think that will indicate some extra key features of how things work and then we'll go into the procedures. So we'll start with the powered block and of course I have just an indication texture to basically show that it's on and the boundary box hasn't changed. I have set some properties here, nothing too important uh, to actually make it work. Under the advanced tab, um, now Again, like I said, most redstone blocks do run on a one tick delay, not a 10 tick delay. So if you want it to work more like a redstone block than like a redstone device, then you want to set the tick to one tick. Um, other properties you can basically set as you wish though. Uh, tile entity, the only major thing is you have to enable this to basically get it to work. Now you don't need any of the other particular things to make it work down here, but uh, you do need to enable tile entity to basically use the data command. Um, fluid and energy and uh, <laughs> energy and fluid storage uh, is basically just the default, uh, isn't used at all. Uh, triggers, we're basically going to run most of our script under the um, update tick, but we do need to set our variables when the block is placed by the player. Um, to the particular states, um, default states, so basically just to assign the variables themselves. Uh, the other thing is we don't have any generation, natural generation going on. Generally you don't want this for redstone blocks or any block for that matter that has a tick rate because it can actually um, lag the game if you're using it for natural generation and stuff, so it's best to th have things that are um, more naturally generated, use a random tick, tick rate if you're going to use it for natural generation. So let's quickly take a look at the one block place. Now this is used for the both of the per particular blocks, so we'll just cover this quickly. And we'll start with uh, just looking at our variables. So this is as far as I can zoom in sadly, but uh, what we basically have here is power east, power west, power south, and power north, and we've set all these variables to false when the block is placed by the player. Now again, if we open up our text document, uh, the corresponding variables are player power south, power north, power west, this part right here, and power east. Now this will basically test for those particular variables that we have assigned. Uh, now oh pardon me, not test for them, we'll be assigning them to the block. So that's basically where that one comes down. The unpowered state uses only a couple commands. So to actually get the system to work, all we need to do is run the script above uh, for our test command. So this is basically the unpowered one. So we're basically going to be, or pardon me, the powered one. So we're going to be testing if it's unpowered, right? So this would be the script that we're actually using in those um, pr procedures for running the additional commands. So this would be this one right here. As you, oh, hold on, maybe I'm wrong. This should be unpowered, right? So unpower. Okay, so we're actually running the unpowered um, update tick. This is interesting. I must have misnamed the procedures powered update tick. How, why is this one open then? Oh, because we clicked on there. Okay, so that's that one. This would be the other one. So yeah, this is the um, the bottom, uh, the bottom one right here. So this basically allows us to turn the block off. So basically the only thing that we're doing is running the command to basically set our variables. And then what we're doing is we're basically testing for those variables. So using a very short condition, uh, we can test if all these variables are set to false, which will make it so the block 
uh, that is basically our current block that's powered. We'll test if there is no signals coming in on the sides as true. And so if there's no power entering the block, then what we're going to do is um, basically set it to false. So we can do this by using and statements in the procedure and testing if the powered north, powered east, power south, and powered west are all false. If this is true, then we're going to unpower the block. So that's basically how that one works. The unpowered one uh, procedure, uh, that was the powered one, this is the unpowered one, is basically running the top script. So this part right here. And again, there is a, like actually three parts to this. We have the unless, the if, and then the run for the actual parts of each individual script. So the first thing that we're testing is if it's basically not the unpowered block. And then what we're doing is we're testing if it, the for the direction, if the direction is the proper direction facing into the block. And then we're also testing if, uh, or basically running our data command to update the variable. So again, that's what's happening up here. And then what we need to do is basically just test if there is any signal on any side coming into the block. So we use the or statement to basically allow the redstone pulse to come in from any side and keep the block on. So again, this would basically all return true. If any of them is true, then what it's going to do is turn on the block. So we can test for any side, doesn't matter which one or how many, using the or statement. And then we can just basically update it. The only thing to keep note is to make sure to keep MBT inventory and keep state. Now, you don't necessarily need to keep the state, but it's probably best if you are working with blocks. Keep state allows you to keep the rotation of the block where keep MBT slash inventory allows you to keep the variables, which is going to be important for this particular system. So yeah, that's basically how I managed to set that up. Now, if we were to quickly just uh, update our variables for both of these blocks to one, now I left that to 10 uh, initially for deliberately, so you could see that there was a delay. So we'll go back in game quickly and then we'll take a look at the how fast it will update now. All right, so we're back in game and we're just gonna quickly switch this lever. As you can see, it almost updates instantly now. So that's perfect. That's how most things actually work with redstone. So if we turn all these on and then turn them all off, you should see that it's updated properly. So again, uh, if you found this tutorial useful, uh, don't forget to subscribe, comment down below, rate the video, and I'll see you guys next time. Thanks for watching, peace out.